Hello all, this is a video of apology, perhaps sharing part of my process for others who may have made similar mistakes or are navigating similar things. And this video is an attempt to correct my course and take accountability for my actions. In 2019, after being unable to walk from um, an autoimmune disease that has changed my life, I started to practice Qigong at the Coco Lulu Farm and Cancer Retreat Center. And in 2019, after that, my teachers invited me to start sharing this practice of Lift Chia Port You Down every Sunday on Zoom by donation. And some of you have done that with me and it's been a consistent part of my life every Sunday with the community. And I've practiced on my own this practice every day. And I'm able to live without pain now. And so I feel great gratitude to, to Qigong. And I know this is my life's work to learn how to, how to walk with this practice in, in a way that, that honors where it came from. Uh, after um, some time, my mother started joining me on Sundays and um, a few years in, she took a class with a teacher named Robert Peng, who's an incredible Qigong master. And he um, taught this class that she took where he taught the eight cycles form. And my mother and I were both very inspired by Robert Peng and also Master Chen Yi Lin of Spring Forest Qigong and many other Qigong teachers that we've taken classes with online um, and learned from in the last five years or so. And for me, having experienced such profound healing in my body, um, I have had this sense like I really want to share this um, and that it's just the best idea to share everything that I know freely on my YouTube channel and in the Sunday group that I led. But it's been brought to my attention that this is really not okay at all. Um, and in fact, it's very disrespectful, specifically the sharing of the eight cycles of Robert Pang, um, disrespectful of, of Robert Pang and his lineage and his teachings. Um, last week, one of my Qigong teachers that I have a lot of respect for emailed me and said he's deeply concerned um, to see this video on YouTube of me leading the eight cycles. And he advised that I apologize and remove the video and stop teaching what I don't have permission to um, and really reevaluate what it is that I do have permission to. So um, it's been an intense week of self-reflection around this. And I'm really grateful to the Qigong teachers that I've reached out to, my mentors who have talked to me about this and um, all the people who've supported me in coming to terms with um, the nuance and maybe misunderstanding that's present and also the really deep roots of um, casual entitlement of appropriation that I carry in my body and in my assumptions and my actions that are really critical to be deeply examining um, at this time. So that's what I'm gonna share about today. Um, so on one hand, there's the nuance and the misunderstanding um, and on the other hand, the deeper issue. And I'm going to share the, the details, not as an excuse or as a defense. I really want to be clear about what exactly has been happening, um, what my relationship with Robert Pang has been in the eight cycles practice. So I've been leading this Sunday group, and some people refer to it as a class, which has not felt totally right to me. I know I'm not certified in anything. I've told people I'm not a teacher. I'm a practitioner sharing this practice. Um, but it's a gray zone. I've never asked for money. I've always said everyone is welcome, but I have given a space for donations and said, if you're able to, here's all my info. Um, and even in that uh, space, you know, I know people have referred to me as a teacher. And so I've, I've tried, you know, to say, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have that kind of credential. I'm just sharing what I know, what I've experienced, but um at the end of the day, that's very much not an excuse for sharing something that I haven't been given permission to share. Um, what feels important to say is that um, whenever I've introduced the eight cycles, like in that group, often I'll share Robert Pang's video, like screen share it, and everyone will practice along. Um, and his video doesn't have any words. It's just um, 
like written, it's not nothing verbal. So people have to be reading the screen to know um, what the form is called and how to how to move. And so I originally made this YouTube video of the eight cycles because um, I only saw his up there and I made one where I'm verbally walking people through it so they can um, have their eyes closed. And so that was my assumption of like, this is a great idea. I'm going to do this because it's the best thing to do. Um, yeah, and then in the Sunday class, leading it verbally, just live with people sometimes. And, and feeling like I'm doing this out of respect, um, sending his free seasonal empowerment sessions that he leads to my Qigong mailing list every month um, and holding him in very high regard as this incredible Qigong master and teacher. Um, but that respect, I'm, I'm really learning a lot about it, what it means to say I respect you or to think I respect someone, um, but then what actions really imply when they are, um, when they're done in a way that, that doesn't actually have a regard for the context that's very small-minded. So I wanna talk about that more now. Um, this, this blind spot, this place of denial that made me think it was okay to share that video and to be um, sharing in this way. Um, I'm just finding that there's these deeper and deeper roots of appropriation of saying, oh, this is nice, this is healing, you know, this changed my life. And so I somehow now have this entitlement. Um, and it's a very white supremacist kind of thinking. It's very common in the United States. And it's something that I've been looking at, but not in this explicit way in this context. So I'm really grateful to my teacher for having brought this to my attention. Um, and one thing that I'm, I'm looking at is this very casual sense of entitlement um, that I'm saying, oh, I know I'm entitled to this because I think that it's a good idea. Um, but it's, it's very small minded in that it has no regard for the fact that I don't understand the Asian American immigrant experience, um, the xenophobia and the racism and the trials that my teachers had to go through, um, my Asian American teachers had to go through to be in this country, to withstand um, assault and bigotry and oppression, to be who they are and to share what they're sharing in the face of aggression and microaggression and cultural displacement and war in their own home countries to have this practice land in front of me so clearly and in such a way that is helpful to me. So receiving that blessing of the practice and then having this very colonial mindset of appropriation um, is immensely disrespectful, even as I have this fabrication, um, this idea of respect in my mind. So I want to profoundly apologize to you, Robert Pang. I wanna extend my, my sincere um, apology and, and regret that is motivating me right now to really sit with this deeply and to see that I put this video up, I shared your practice without your blessing, without your permission. So I recognize the ignorance, the entitlement that has come through my body in this time that has denied the critical importance of receiving direct transmission and permission and training uh, in a way that appropriately passes on teachings and honors the lineage that has brought them to me. And I wanna extend my sincere thanks and apology to my teacher for bringing this to my attention um, as a white ally who also doesn't have the lived experience of an Asian American immigrant teacher and master, but you are a teacher and master who um, is acting in allyship right now and calling me in and I'm really grateful for that. Um, even though it's been painful um, to come to terms with the harm that I might have caused to our relationship, my connection with Robert Pang um, in, in the chi field and it's been an opportunity to humble myself, to really share this with people in my life, you know, saying this is what happened and to receive a lot of different feedback and input and come to terms with my own integrity in this practice. And perhaps sharing this video is helpful for others who are learning similar lessons right now. Um, and if any of this is resonating with you, I wanna highlight kind of the core of this lesson for me, which is this idea of respect that I've touched on. Um, saying I really respect you 
And then the actions are dismissive or the actions are even defensive um, in the face of the invitations to really listen deeply and, and see a broader perspective. Um, so for me, the flag is really this moment of, I know the best course of action. I know what needs to happen, even with really good intentions. Ultimately, realizing that that, flagging that as, as small-minded and not taking into consideration the huge context that's holding this view. Um, and even dismissing and denying, denying or ignoring invitations from people who I believe I respect to invitations to step back, to step away, um, to get a more collective collective reality check on the situation. So thank you for watching this, my community, to be that eyes and ears and perspective that helps to soften my small-minded vision and open to broader needs, understandings, lived experiences that I don't have. And I take responsibility for my own audacity, not just asking you to hold me responsible, but saying, yeah, I had this projected confidence. I had this um, audacity and idea of my conviction of my entitlement to be sharing this and that's shown to be false right ungrounded in true respect um, and throughout this process connecting with my teachers I've also been able to receive clarity from Karen and Lou my teachers on the island of Hawaii who taught me lift you up down that I do have their permission to be teaching lift you up down even as like a class like a formal class where I'm charging money um, which I'm not doing right now, but it feels good to have really clarified that with them. And I want to share that with you all. Um, yeah, to know that not only do I have their permission, but I'm also right now focusing on Jen and Qigong, which is that lineage, that lift chip, poetry down lineage. And I'm focusing on receiving more official teacher training certifications um, from Master Zhu and Dr. Peng Ming's lineage of Jen and Qigong. Um, and, and allowing the, the fact that I've been practicing that one every day for five years to really hone in deeper, um, which is difficult to, to segregate or to compartmentalize totally all of the embodied teachings that I've received from other lineages, but um, to very explicitly be focused on Jen and Qigong right now. And there's also shifts that are coming to the Sunday space and moving towards more of a focus on community and collective sharing um, embodiment and presence. Um, and so that's going from Heartstrong Qigong to the Qigong Community Sangha, the Sunday Qigong Sangha. And um, so you'll see that shift on the page. And yeah, just seeing and understanding the real importance of having explicit permission. Um, I'm just like looking at the end of my notes here to make sure I've covered everything. If you see me like looking to the side, um, I'm really grateful, I'm really humbled uh, to be sitting with this, with myself, this deep, difficult, sometimes insidious sense of supremacy of my ideas, um, entitlement to take up space and take and share things that are not mine to take and share. And, uh, and noticing when I'm lacking context and when I'm making assumptions uh, and noticing what care and acknowledgement is missing in this case of the sacredness of the transmission of chi of practice that I have. I have an idea that I have so much respect for and that I aspire to really embody that respect, that respect of this practice and this healing that's such a blessing for so many of us. So thank you for watching. Thank you to all my ancestors, my blood ancestors, my spiritual ancestors, my ancestors of this land that I'm one in Chiapas, the Tzotzi people for all of the suffering that all of these lineages have gone through that allows me to be here. May I humble myself to what is being asked of me to have the opportunity to show up, to learn these lessons, to embody them, to share them in respectful ways that are appropriate. Thank you to all my teachers. Haula. And please reach out to me if you want to engage with any of this, talk about it more. Um, what it means to be walking, walking at this time, in this moment. Thank you.